Last week I put out a call for you guys to ask me questions about whatever you wanted, and now I shall answer some. Cactus Jack Guy asks, when did you decide to grow a mustache? I can actually remember this quite clearly. See, for a long time I used to look like this, and then around 2007 or so I went through a phase in which I was quite depressed and I sort of let my hair grow long and I stopped shaving, and a lot of people told me that they actually thought that was a better look for me, so I decided to keep it. But I really hated the way the beard felt on my face, so I tried these different styles in which I would shave it short, but eventually I just decided to get rid of it altogether. But keep the mustache. Clinton Williamson asks, what's the deal with your hair? Well, as you've seen, when I was young, I used to cut my hair very short, and for a long time I wasn't actually even aware that my hair is as wavy and crazy as it is. And so having wavy, crazy hair is still kind of a fun gimmick to me, so I like doing crazy stuff with it. I know a lot of people don't have hair that's as thick as mine, so I feel like I should be grateful and embrace it. Jermar97 asks, how many languages can you speak? I can only speak English. I guess I can technically read a tiny little bit of Japanese, but it's actually kind of surprising that I didn't learn more considering I spent a whole year there. Noelle the Only asks, do you have any pets? I don't actually, and I never have. When I was growing up, my parents were really against animals, so I never developed much of an affinity for cats or dogs, and I still really don't have one to this day. Speaking of animals, Elias JL asks, why did you become a vegetarian? Are you thinking of eventually going vegan? I honestly do not have a a very good reason. Basically on some level I just like not doing things. I already don't drink alcohol or caffeine so I guess at some point it occurred to me that not eating meat was another thing I could do. Going vegan seems a little tough though even for me. Gilberto Scapani asks, what's your favorite food slash dessert? I think my favorite food is probably salmon and my favorite dessert is probably candy. Does candy count as a dessert? I eat a lot of candy. Amani Jillings asks, when did you become interested in politics? Probably when I was in my senior year of high school. That was when I started really getting interested in political cartoons, and it was also the year that 9-11 happened. So I guess I was just exposed to a lot of political stuff at that time, and I started thinking, well, this seems like something that's worth paying attention to. Chargers Hackenberg asks, where do you stand on the political compass? I actually don't like the political compass, and I will tell you why. It was a thing designed by libertarians with the explicit purpose of making everyone realize that they're a libertarian too. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, the political compass is this thing that slots everyone into one of four quadrants as measured by where they stand on two metrics, how much they like the free market, and how much they value individual freedom. And since everyone claims to like individual freedom, everyone winds up in the libertarian half of the grid. I really don't think it's a very useful or serious thing. I would prefer to answer this question by Jack Yanoshik, which is, how would you generally describe your political leanings? So as a lot of you already know, I self identify as a conservative. A lot of this comes from the fact that I think I am just generally a cautious person by temperament, and I'm inclined to think that things are never quite as bad as people make them out to be. I guess I'm sort of broadly anti-government in the sense that I don't really like the idea of government being the dominant force shaping our culture or civilization. And part of this is because I just think it is generally quite difficult for any government to really understand the best interests of the public. But you know, I've really actually tried quite hard to keep a lot of my political views out of my YouTube videos. I have this other life where all I do is write and talk and think about politics, and to be perfectly honest with you, it can be pretty stressful a lot of the time. So I actually quite like the idea that YouTube is something where I can put that side of my life aside and focus on other stuff. But if you guys would actually like more politics, I'd be curious to hear that. Devin Robinson asked, will you ever run for a political office? I have thought about it, but honestly, I do not think I have accomplished enough in my life to be qualified for political office. Note to self, if I do run for political office, delete this video. Octavian Onescu. Onescu, is that how you say it? This was the name of one of the dictators, wasn't it? Anyway, he asks, how did you discover you were gay? Um, it wasn't actually a very interesting story. It was just sort of something that kind of dawned on me as I got older. At some point, I guess I just learned a clearer definition of what being gay meant. And then I was like, yeah, I guess that's me. Ren Brink asks, what advice would you give to young people like me on how to come out as gay? Also, how do you deal with homophobes? Well, Ren, I think it can be a very difficult thing. I actually made a whole video about this question with my friend Adam. I will link 
to it in the thing below. I guess the best advice I can give is to just not get too hung up on this idea that there is a right way to do it. There is no magic age where you have to do it, and there is no rule that says you have to come out to everyone at the same time. I came out to different people in my life at very different times. I came out to my sister many years after I came out to my parents. You just have to be able to trust your own instincts to know when is the most appropriate time in each relationship to reveal this kind of information about yourself. I guess I should add one thing though. I do think it is objectively a bad idea to ever use coming out as a sort of weapon against someone else. It should never be something that you yell in anger or something that you use to humiliate or hurt someone. Doing that is how you really poison someone else's opinion of your sexuality because you've kind of forever tied it up in this very traumatic moment between you two. As far as homophobes go, I guess I am lucky because this has honestly not been a very big problem in my own life. Maybe in high school I got teased a bit, but the way I got over it in those days was to just be very self-confident in other realms of my life. When I was proud of the less controversial things about me, it made me feel less weak. Steve M asks, do you have a boyfriend? No, I do not. Shove Laxnet asks, you really love America. How come you haven't moved to the US? I would gladly take an opportunity to live and work in the US. Don't you think that would be a big honor to be asked to live and work in a different country? But not every foreigner in the world gets to waltz into America just because they feel like it. You have to have a visa, which requires having an American job, and I don't have that. Saudi Bia Mapping Mappers asks, where else have you been in Canada? Not very many places. I have been to British Columbia, obviously, where I live. I have been to Alberta several times. I spent about a week in Quebec. And I have been to Ontario a couple of times. Tiny Play asks, if you could live in any other province or territory in Canada, where would it be? Given my limited exposure, I would probably say Alberta. Mason Jar asks, how many US states have you been to? Okay, let's see. I have been to Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona in the west, Massachusetts, New York, and Pennsylvania in the east, and Texas in the south, and Florida in the Florida. The Norwegian mapper asks, if you could travel to any country in the world, which country would you like to travel to? Sorry, it's not Norway. At the moment, I'm really fascinated by South Africa. I think I would like to visit Cape Town at some point in the near future. McMaster1471 asks, as a Japanese person, I have a question. How was Japan? I actually did not like my time in Japan, I'm sorry to say. I didn't like the job I was doing and I didn't like being away from my friends and family. I felt really lonely and I really felt like I was just wasting my time there. I also found it to be a very difficult culture to feel comfortable in as a foreigner. I didn't like standing out all of the time and Japan has a lot of very complicated cultural norms that are hard to relate to if you're from the West. James R. Kieliswicki asks, Do you think pineapple on pizza is okay? I have always hated it. Daniel Reynolds asks, What is your favorite movie? Well, Daniel, let me tell you a controversial fact about me. I don't really like movies. I think they are very long and boring, and I don't know if this is because I have a short attention span or what, but I've always had a hard time getting into them. So as a result, I have not seen very many movies, and I could not give you a very good answer as to what my favorite would be. It would just be something really stupid and ignorant. Suki Condor asks, What were your favorite shows growing up as a kid, and what influenced your art style. When I was a kid, I really loved Disney everything. So I watched all the movies and the TV shows. I really liked Darkwing Duck and DuckTales and Goof Troop and that sort of stuff. But I have always loved The Simpsons and I've always been a big fan of the Nickelodeon stuff as well, like Rugrats and Doug and Ah Real Monsters and Rocco's Modern Life. I think you can see some influence of that stuff in the way that I draw, but a much bigger influence in my art was video games. In particular, I really liked the art in Mario and Zelda and Sonic and sort of Japanese games of that era. And lastly, Jacob Davidson asks, what what was your inspiration to become a YouTuber? I would say four channels, The Green Brothers, Wheezy Waiter, and noted fellow Canadian Matthew Santoro. Oh boy, so that was a lot of questions. I apologize to anybody whose question I didn't answer, there were just too many to include in one video. There were a lot of questions about Canada in particular. At some point in the future I will have to do a Canada only Q&A. But anyway, hopefully learning all this random stuff about me has been interesting. Next week we will be back with a normal video. Thanks again so much to all of my subscribers. Peace!